faith to break out. Here at Victory Family Church, we're a part of the body and we have a mission. Somebody shout out the mission. One more soul. I'll take that to another level. It's just not bringing one more person to church. It's bringing one more soul to Jesus. It's also bringing one more soul into discipleship. Bringing one more soul into the purpose of God's kingdom. Every person has a part. And one part is no more important than the other. Every person has a part. And when we unite the parts, that's why we don't neglect the gathering of church on Sundays. That's why we look to God to give us godly leaders that we can honor and we can listen to for the time and the seasons. Okay? And, and, and for the appointments. Because every person is to come together in unity. Y'all ready? Psalm 133, verse 1. Write it down. Chalk it up. Print it. <laughs> Put it in your house. It'll work for your kids. It'll work for uh, your marriages. It'll work for being single. It'll work for your workplace. You might want to put it all over your workplace, okay? Psalm 133.1 says, How good and pleasant it is when brethren come together in unity. And you can read the rest of it on from there, but it says it brings the anointing. The anointing is the presence of God in such a way that it is worship. It runs down Aaron's beard, it says, going down his priestly robe. When it says it goes down his priestly robe, it goes to the bottom down there where all those little sashes are the prayers. Intercessors, arise and take your stations. <laughs> How beautiful it is when we come together in Amen. And our mission is one more soul. Talking about faith, we love this scripture, but I'm pretty sure we don't live it to the fullest. But hopefully after today, we'll get a reminder. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by and not by. We walk by. And not by sight. sight is inclusive of our understanding, not just our visual aid. You don't have to understand it to do it. You don't have to understand God to follow him. You don't have to know the scriptures inside and out to know God. He presents and reveals himself to us through an intimate relationship when we surrender. I love this scripture here, Hebrews 6, 1. It says, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites and the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal uh, judgment, I just skipped way down. Hold on. Sorry. My kids have been laughing at me. So, uh, because I am all about learning a new technology right now. <laughs> but we are not every Sunday to talk about, hey, repent of your sins. This isn't Catholic confessions. The altar is for us to die on and worship the Lord. He's cleansed you from all unrighteousness. He's forgiven you if you've asked for forgiveness. What he awaits is for you to arise and shine in the righteousness that is yours. To walk by faith and not by sight. Don't get lost during the week is the problem. During the week, God doesn't become less faithful. Pastor Jason is about to come and read one in a minute, but 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 13, it says, examine yourselves to see if you are in what? It's, on, it's the next slide, slides. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 13. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith, is what it says. Test.
test yourselves, or do you realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? You see, when we walk by faith and not by sight, we're also having to refuse to see our flaws. Now, I'm all about living holy. Look, you, you need to be convicted. And if you get in the presence of God, you're going to live so convicted because you're going to have him as your love. And his desires become your desires. And what he hates, you're going to hate. It just happens with the born-again experience. You're no longer yourself. You have become a born-again believer, and the Holy Spirit begins to do this work in you where you see things differently. But where we fell in faith is that we try to, uh, we rely on our own examination of ourselves, and we say, I'm not worthy to do the works of Jesus. John the Baptist did it too. When Jesus came to John the Baptist at the water, John the Baptist said, I am not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus said, you must do these things. Get over yourself and follow my commands. (laughs) He wants you to walk with him. Examine yourselves to see that you are in faith. And Pastor Jason's coming up with 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 2. This next scripture, I just like, he was reading it. We were reading it this morning. I was like, your voice on that scripture is powerful. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but rather as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk and not solid food, for you were not ready. You're still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, hey, I follow Apollo, and another, I follow Paul, are you not mere men? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants, only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned each his task. Everybody say amen to the word of God. So, brothers and sisters, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though I belonged to this world. What's your conversations like at home? What's your conversations like in your car, on the phone, with people? Listen, we have fallen prey to the lie that we got to be like the world to win the world. We should be talking a different language, guys. You got to bring them into the miracles of the Lord, how God changed your life. It's okay if they oppose it, but my goodness, what a shame that they don't even have the chance because we won't open our mouth and break the silence. Come on. It, it's, he is worthy. We have to quit spinning around in this circle of church and Christianity. I'm a good person. I go to church. I, I got a good church. I'm proud of my church. We're spinning in this circle of belonging to a, a Sunday crew, but we are not yet stepping where we belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken because we're not taking the kingdom with us. You see, faith is activated not for a good church service, though I love a good church service, y'all. I love seeing people come to the altar. I love the intercessory prayer that happens around this campus. I love the youth group and the young adults and everything that goes on. I love all the lots and stuff. I think God's gifted people with creative abilities, and if the church doesn't use them, the world will. So don't get upset about some smoke machines and lots. If they want it, let's do it. You know, it's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. But if we don't use the, some of these kids, the world will. And they got talents. They got gifts. You got talents. You got gifts. And a lot of us are just sitting on them. We're saying my workplace is too dark. It, the, it, the darker it is, the more people will see your faith. The more godless it is, the easier it is to come in and shine light. Like right now, if I shined a light, you would barely see it because we've already got light in here. These lights are so bright, but if I went into darkness and I shined the light, I would expose the darkness. And then people would take note and go, wow, I see. Don't let your faith be snatched away because your circumstances don't line up with what you thought they would be. 
Don't let your faith be snatched away when you are tested and tried because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. If faith is not tested, then it is not known. You don't know what you got until it's tested. Getting saved was one of the best days in my life. But then, I mean, I tell everybody, and this is, I, I, I just had this life, okay? I had a life that before Christ, I was living in tremendous sin in, in most cases, but I never had a bad thing really happen to me. Not a bad thing, you know? And then I got saved, and everything was cruising because God will baby you for a little bit. He'll, make, he'll let you get comfortable a little bit. But then you start to face some trials. You start to see some persecution. You begin to face some sickness. You have to go to this battle and that battle. And it's not continuous. There's rest in between. Disappointment. Don't understand why that happened. It is for the testing of your faith that you can stand. You're not the only person. He's doing it and allowing some things for all of us. Or some people in our life are making choices that change the course for us that we can't control. But I can't let someone else's happenings dictate my faith. If they choose not to like you, or they choose to fall off the rails of, of their Christian walk, you gotta stay steadfast. I'm gonna give you some good marriage advice right now. One of you may fall away, but it shouldn't be both of you. You don't fall back in a marriage to pick somebody up. You got to keep loving them and keep going because if both of you go, what do we got? Be strong in the Lord. Be courageous in his mightiness. Come on. This is the year of active faith, contending faith, mature faith faith. And like I said, I'm not preaching to the wind, guys. This is all dependent on what do you want? No one can do it for you. No one could make Moses turn around and go and obey the Lord and return to the place where he had murdered somebody. Nobody could do it for him. Moses had to make a choice and I choose. I live by faith, not by sight. I choose that when Jesus returns, he'll find my faith. He will not find me faithless. Whew. He's faithful. James 2, 18. James chapter 2, verse 18 says, Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, I will show you my faith by my good deeds. So, of course, in the book of James, he's talking about activate your faith. You don't have faith if it's not active. Living faith does something. Living faith is kept up, okay? Faith without deeds is dead, James said, okay? But right here, I want to I clarify something. It says, now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds, Sometimes what we're doing in our Christian walk is we are thinking we're walking by faith when we're just doing good deeds. You didn't have to exercise faith to buy that coffee for that person. It's just a good deed. God wants us to mature where we're not just doing good deeds, things that are in our capability to do, but things that require us to have faith. Do you see the difference? Good deeds are things that you're just able to do. God loves good deeds. But the next level faith is I need to do things that I don't have the provision for yet, but God said it and I'll do it. I need to do something that my body doesn't feel like doing yet, but God's telling me to do it. I'm going to do it because I believe by faith, not by sight, not by what's already present. So we comfort ourselves in the church. We say, I'm a good person. I do good things. I showed up for church. I read a devotion this week. You know Jesus by faith, so don't hear what I'm not saying. But he wants us to exercise our faith. That requires us to do things that are out of our capabilities, that scare us, that make us uncomfortable sometimes. Now, God doesn't need your performance. 
He needs your prayer life. And when he says do it, that's how he provides. It's not a test of if you're a good enough Christian and you're sitting there thinking, what can I do that doesn't require my, my, my um, things that I already have, my talents? What can I do? No, you go to prayer and he tells you what to do. When he says it, he provides for it. Y'all with me this morning? So this is the year of active faith, contending faith, mature faith. Luke 18, 8 says, however, when the son of man appears, will he find this kind of persistent, persistent, that is in um, parentheses because, or, or those things right there, that grammar I can't think of right now, brackets, because that's what it really means. Will I find persistent faith on the earth? He's looking for faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she came and got into his way. And she did not have what it took to um, approach him except for persistent faith. When she w walked in persistent faith, she received her healing. Faith comes by three things, the Bible says. Faith comes by hearing the word of God seeing the word and displaying the word when we hear the word of god we have one level of faith when we begin to see the word of god meaning that we're asking god for revelation and we're seeing things that's the next step the next stage okay then we take it another level and we display our faith that don't mean put a bumper sticker on the back of your car but it might but it might if you've been ashamed of Jesus and none of your friends knew you were saved, you might need to put about seven fish on the back of that car. And a bumper sticker says, Jesus is coming soon and I'm going with him, okay? Wear them Christian t-shirts. Everybody's at a different level, but whatever you do, step up. Whatever it takes, step up. If you saw the, the, the sick healed, let's go for the dead raised. If you just made it to church this morning, praise the Lord Jesus. I commend you. And now let's bring a friend and let's be consistent. Everyone's at a different place of faith, but we're all in faith together. And as long as we're growing, it pleases the Lord. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Okay, so is faith the substance of what I can already see? Is it the substance of what I'm already doing? Okay, it's invisible, guys. So next level faith is where we see the invisible become reality. Yeah. It's where we bring the desires of heaven down to earth. That is next level faith. And how do we walk in this next level faith? Oh, I love it. David Pipkins had no idea I was going to say this. But when he was taking up the offering, the Lord was speaking. We had to commit. I got one word for you this afternoon, okay? Right here. Commit. Commitment. It is so opposite of what the world wants right now. Because you know what? When I joined the gym back in 1994, they made you commit. That'd be $650. And you got to check in with the card and be here. Commit. But what have they done today? No agreement. <laughs> you can sign up right now, and there is no commitment. God needs our commitment. He needs us to commit. You know, that tithe that you have been leaving out, that you've just been guesstimating, this is the year you need to get that right. Because the Lord has held off the devourer for, for a good while trying to grow you up. But it's the year of grow up mountain, people, okay? Grow up mountain. Your tithe is attached to more than you. I could ever stand up here and tell you. It is attached to so much. It's not just attached to you. It's attached to me. It's attached to the work of the kingdom. It's attached to the next person. It's attached to your children. It is a generational privilege and blessing to be able to pay 10% back to God. 
absolutely on time. Okay? And you say, why do you say that? Because the Bible says so, and it didn't change. It's in Malachi. It's also over there in the New Testament that we, they were supposed And look, isn't that, is, okay, let's take it to the next level of faith. It's not just talking about 10%. Come on. Come on. It's saying, you know, like, give it what you have. In Acts, they gave all that they owned all they possessed, they spent their days with one another, seeking the Lord, working, going after God. We have to commit. Commitment means I am steadfast looking at this direction and I'm not turning around the other way. There's a lot of people that won't get married because they're not ready to commit. But they'll, they'll hang around that relationship and so we got a whole lot of living togethers. And if that's somebody listening to me, I love you. Don't you run away from me. Don't you run away. I'm not condemning you. I'm, I'm giving you truth to set the captive free. You see, because we've been in a season where it seemed like God was okay with some things. He was just holding back. He was just holding back, being merciful, being gracious. You know, you can't, you can't, ooh, what do you see? You cannot continue in immature ways, friends. Come on. He, you know why? Because it affects your faith. When you got stuff that's even hidden sin, or you won't forgive somebody, I can guarantee you if I take you up to the hospital with me and I say, that person's dying right there, I need you to lay hands, you're going to look at me and go, you do it. Because y'all think, you know, we think, all of us, we think someone has greater faith than we have. Someone has more experience than I have. Someone's been, who's going to be the next person to carry on? But the reason we don't feel qualified is because we disqualify ourselves. God has qualified you. He's given you the greatest gift that ever could be given. He gave you his son. He died on a cross. You haven't even been in his presence and he died for you. You didn't give him anything, and he died for you. Right. He died for me, and he's worthy of me sacrificing whatever I need to sacrifice so that I'm close to him. Amen. He's the way. You don't know where you're going? You haven't been with him because he knows where he's going, and when I, he knows where he's going, I just got to be with him. We make it so difficult, but there's a lot of times we don't feel close to God because we're not walking in faith. We're walking in what we think we got to have, what we think we can't break free from. We're looking at circumstances with an unrenewed mind. We commit. Psalm 37 says, commit your way to the world and trust him and he will do this. He will make your right, you righteous rewards shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways and carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. He calls you, my friends, his people, called by his name. He's ready to marry you. He's not keeping you there to use you, to do wrong to you. He said, I want to make you my bride, the bride of Christ. You can't compare the relationship with God with what you've been through. He's not man that he should lie. He's not man that he should treat you wrong. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. His name is above every disease and sickness. His name is above the name of every evil scheme the enemy could ever do toward you. God has you. We just got to get a hold of God. Commitment happens on next fe level faith levels, okay? Three spheres of existence God has set you in. Next level faith has to happen like this. Spiritual commitment. You got to marry God. 
You got to put the ring on. You got to say, God, this is your temple, and I commit my body to your service, my spirit to what you want to do. I receive the Holy Spirit. Take over everything that's within me. Spiritual commitment. Number two, there has to be mental and emotional commitment. You can't have another lover and go after God because a kingdom divided against itself will fall. He wants to set up his kingdom in here. You got to get your mind made up. I love what Pastor Jason said last Sunday. He reminded us the word decide. It means to put to death all other options. We have to decide mentally and emotionally, you're my love. And number three is physical commitment, spiritual commitment, mental and emotional commitment, and then physical commitment. It means, God, I'm present and accounted for. Monday morning, I wake up and I say, Holy Spirit, I'm here. I didn't escape. I didn't run away. I'm here. Let's open up the word, Jesus. Let's see what you have to say. Let's go to work like we are on fire for something that's going to happen instead of doom and gloom like something bad's going to happen today. I don't like being here. This place is crazy. That woman made me mad. Come on. I don't have any customers. How are you going to enter your mission field? You wake up and you say, I'm here, present and accounted for. Carry me on in there and let's do this thing. He's able. Yes, he He's with you. <laughs> Come on, don't leave him at church Sunday. Let's go. I want to say this to you too. I'm not, I'm almost closing, but I'm not closing. I'm just closing that right there. <laughs> the Lord said this to me. He said, okay, you're telling them to have faith. They've heard the scriptures. How many of you have heard most of the scriptures I just read? Come on, talk back to me. How many of you have heard them? Wall by faith, not by sight. When Jesus returns to the earth, he's looking for faith, okay? You've heard the scriptures, but how do we take this into the practical? Well, here you go. I was praying about this. God is faithful to answer, okay? Some of you have got to get really faithful in your single days, being single. Really faithful. I, I'm telling you, God, I'm helping you. God spoke this to me, and I, and I live this, but he spoke this to me. In your single days, it is the time to seek the Lord, not to seek a spouse. In your single days, I'm telling you, y'all are going to be mad at me maybe. I don't know, but I love every one of y'all. And this church I know ain't big enough for me to be talking like this sometimes because y'all think I'm talking about somebody in particular, and I'm not. I'm not. If you shared anything with me, that's not how I work. But I'm telling you, in your single days, every married couple is going to cheer this on. In your days of being single, don't act, you, God does not require you to pray for that person you're supposed to be with. Amen. Because what happens is that prayer becomes an idol. All right. And that person becomes what you begin to think about 20% of the time, 30%, maybe 50%. But if you will seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, will he not add all these things unto you? Okay? So the Lord wanted me to tell you, enjoy your single days. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy him. Enjoy him. Rejoice with him. Use this time to get so close to God that that other person really does have to chase down the Lord to find you. I looked, I, I told the young adults this the other night, but this was the absolute truth, and y'all don't think, you know, Pastor Jason gets away with being transparent. I don't feel like I do sometimes, <laughs> but I'm telling you, kindergarten, I was crushing. Every little boy in there was being looked at. I was going, I wonder who my husband's going to be. <laughs> and it didn't stop. It, I, it was most of my years. It always had to be about a boy. I mean, all the time. I'm just telling you. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if mama was watching soap opera one day and it just got on me. But I needed a husband in kindergarten. <laughs> and then I needed one in fifth grade and I needed one in junior high. And, and you know, and they needed something. Or, you know, yes. Yeah, so, anyway. And, um... It took me getting saved at 23 years old when I really gave my life to God. One of the things that 
got taken away from me was absolute desire to be with anybody but Jesus. I just found what I had always been looking for. And it sounds so Christian needs, you know, oh, come to Jesus and he fulfills all your, you know, and, and, and we sit over there and go, da, 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 she just don't know, God doesn't know, you know, and, and I get it, but I'm telling you, it, the only reason you are still left lacking is because there's something you haven't given, totally surrendered to God. He will take your surrender and fulfill you from head to toe, from inside out, your mind, your heart, your body. You will not desire anything but him because he is so good. But if you'll do that, you'll be exercising faith. Faith looks opposite than the world. So next level of faith, if you want to jot this down, faith is more than belief. Faith, even the demons believe and they shudder, the Bible says. So faith is more than belief. Faith is turning your back on fear and doubt. You know, I, I, being fearful that one day things aren't gonna change for you. Being fearful, you don't even recognize fear. You just think it's comfortable to worry. Worry is fear. And fear has no place where faith needs to live. You're worried about if you make the right decisions, if you pray hard enough, if you commit yourself to the Lord, no decision needs to be feared about. He leads us beside still waters. He takes us wherever we need to go, even into trials so that our faith is tested. I do not fear. Amen. Faith requires tunnel vision. That's something we haven't acquired a whole lot. And especially today, here's the warning. You are getting too much input. You are scrolling on a computer that's giving you everybody's opinions, everybody's thoughts, everybody's ideas, everybody's friendships, everybody's prayer requests, every job that's out there. And you can't have tunnel vision when it's just <laughs> all this stuff is bombarding your mind. Turn it off. Get tunnel vision. Here's what tunnel vision is. Tunnel vision is where objects cannot be seen unless they are near the center of your vision field. Wow. I like that. So again, yes. What? Oh, well. Is she in here? So... I don't know if she wants me to tell it. Somebody in our house <laughs> came to our bedside last night, and that's how it is, y'all. You think you go into bed. You, you think you tuck them in. No. They got one more thing to say. So a body appears in the dark and is coming to the side of our bed. And um, this little person had to tell us that God had really, and, and they were like, I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to say this. It was like so sweet. It was just like, just say it. Like, what's wrong? What's going on? And um, they were like, God's really convicted me that there's too much coming into my mind. And I'm talking about, this is a kid that don't have a phone. Doesn't really have, well, they had to borrow my laptop. They don't have a lot of things. And I'm thinking, really? Okay. Yeah. And, and they went on to say, yeah, I feel like it's dividing me from the presence of God. And I really need to stop. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. And so we hugged this voice in the dark. And we said, we're with you. We're with you. Because we, we, you got to do that, guys. You see, it's not, we're, we're good at being individualized, but the family unit, okay, or, or the family of God unit. You may not have kids in your house right now. You may be in a different season or you're single and you live alone. Um, you know, but you need to unify with someone who says, I'm going to walk that walk with you. I remember last year, Missy got tremendously um, convicted about false nails. 
You see, God will do these silly things, right? It sounds so silly. And, and, and I remember that. And she got really convicted about it. And then I heard one of our sisters in the Lord say, well, if Missy's going to take her nails off, I'm going to do it with her. I don't want her to walk alone. Amen. Are you willing, yes. Psalm 133, to walk by faith and in unity? It's so good. Jesus was very focused on the mission field. And it was those who decided to get in his path that would receive. You see, he didn't go chase Peter down on the, uh, out there on the shore and say, I told you to follow me. I told you to follow me. No, he said to those, peop- those disciples he was calling in, Can you come follow me. And that's where we hear Paul say, follow me as I follow the example of Christ. You see, when you awaken in faith in your life, you need to bring people along with you. It's bigger than what what you see. Next level faith, taking commitment, faith in your season, being single, faith in you leaving a relationship to pursue God, faith in the vision that God has given you, faith to pray, 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 faith to get up early in the morning and sacrifice yourself, faith that God will come to you in the middle of your circumstances. Does he not have it, guys? He has it. You just have to keep looking at him and listening for his next steps. And if he says nothing, don't do nothing. Faith that hears. Commit to God. Commit to the need at hand. Commit to what is now rather than looking at what's next. Right now, are you in faith? Right now, if you're on a list to serve in an area in the church, are you doing it in faith? Are you just randomly when you feel like it? These are testing grounds. It's why the body of Christ is here. Connect and be faithful in the little things so God can make you ruler over much. We want to shortcut this thing. But, the, but you didn't see the years I cried. You know, I, I've had people recently, well, somebody was sick at work, and, and I didn't know what to do. And they said, well, what did you do? Well, I didn't do nothing, but I would have called Pastor Kim. She would have known what to do. No, no, no. No. You got to do it. If you never do it, you never will. You got to do it, and you can. You see, we're being distracted. We're being discouraged, and we don't even know it because we think we know a giant of the faith. I'm not a giant of the faith, but I knew a giant of the faith, and I thought that my dad could do all things. But there came a day when dad passed, and, and, and seasons even changed in my life before then that we had to rely on what was in us. I remember Pastor Jason looking at me and going, you know, we were getting in our 40s, and I remember you looking at me, and I can't remember what the circumstance was, but there was a time we had to look at each other and go, we're the people now. We keep looking for someone to lead us, but we're the leaders now. <laughs> you know? that There comes a point where you got to step up. I wish I'd have had that in my 20s. I wish I would have had it in my 30s. It was available, but I let fear and doubt and people's opinions shade out what God had called on my life because the same anointing that you have in this room right now, it's on you now. Whether you're five months old in the Lord, whether you're six months old, 10 months old, one year old, 20 years old, God's reviving the faith in the land because we've got to go and possess God's kingdom, guys. We've got to be the light. Jesus is coming. I got that on right now. Jesus is coming. I got a little pin on my shirt that says Jesus is coming. And it's up to us to help usher in the coming of the Lord. Wake up. Wake up. You know, I know our church services go long. I know that. But isn't he worthy of a day of the week? God, I sound old when I say this, but when I was growing up, (laughs) we were there Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday night prayer, Wednesday, maybe a little, look, dad got the fling for it. We was going to have revival (laughs) every day of the week, okay? You okay with the Sunday morning? Change your mind. Change your mind. What are we living for? 
What are, what are we trying to do here? We trying to just have good church? We trying to get God in our life to where we go and are ambassadors for him. Amen. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Amen. It's not about me. And what better place to be? I'm so thankful, y'all. I live right around the corner. And all these little kids you see all in this church, they would live up here. It's the most amazing thing. The kids that go to school, Victory Christian School is next door. We have almost 100 students, K-5 through 12. They don't want to leave. We need some of that. Don't schedule stuff on Sunday. It's his day. Saturday's Sabbath. That's the day you rest. Love y'all. I love being up here. I love being with y'all. I mean, it ignites my fire. Ooh, hallelujah. So we can either, (laughs) Lord, this wasn't planned, but here we go. Last things I'm saying. We can either walk by faith or walk by the flesh. How are you going to walk by faith and not walk by the flesh? You've got to discipline your flesh. You can't do what the flesh feels like. Oh, the flesh is give out. I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'm not showing up. You got to show up. You don't have a choice, okay? That's how you got to treat yourself. I don't have a choice. Pastor Kim and Jason don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. Unify with us. I come up here. I have kids at home puking. I'm nobody. I just learned I can't quit. If I stop, he wins. You know? You got to keep getting up and praying when things didn't turn out the right way. You, you do. You do. You need to. Come on, don't stop. We can either discipline our flesh or we can be totally in disobedience because the flesh really does lead us into destruction. It leads us into disobedience. A walk of the Spirit is a walk of faith. The Spirit-filled life. The flesh counts for nothing. The Spirit leads to life. Abraham had two sons. And the Bible says this in Galatians 4, 22. He had a son by the woman who was free, and he had a son by the slave woman but who was born according to the flesh. But his son by the free woman was born as a result of divine promise. Maybe you've got to back up a minute and say, what's happening in my life that was not birthed out of faith? What activity do I partake in that, you know, it's just about my flesh and it's not about my faith walk? And you've got to back off of that if you're going to grow. You've got to make room for Jesus. Worship team, you can come on up. A committed walk with Christ is a guarantee for provision, direction, obtaining the means of life. Can somebody hand me my Bible wherever it went down there? Or a Bible? Faith was meant to be tested. And I'm going to end with this. If you will walk by faith, guys, I love this right here, and I just found it this morning, Psalm 25. There are promises, and, and, and it's security. But if you go over to Psalm 25, it's getting a little warm in here. Norton's coming. <laughs> For the honor of your name, O Lord, forgive many, many sins. Who are those who fear the Lord? Who are those who fear the Lord? Here's what he'll give you. He will show them the path they should choose. They will. This is um, Psalm 25, verse 11. I started out, but I'm in verse 13. They will live in prosperity, and their children will inherit the land. The Lord is a friend of those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues me from the traps of the enemy. Turn to me and have mercy, for I am alone and in deep distress. Have mercy on me. There are promises that God, really what it is, is he's present. And when he's present, he sees about all your needs. One more soul, one more rescue, one more step of faith. Um, I'm going to do something in just a minute. You can just, like, don't play a song, but just hit a chord, please. One of the major disappointments in mine and Pastor Jason's life, I had a prayer partner 
that I met at the Brownsville Revival, and this woman was a single woman, and she was full of Jesus. Man, I loved my Cheryl Dunlap. We walked together. We were walking together and praying when 911 happened, actually. And I, I just remember it was such a, a Jonathan and David kind of relationship where we were just prayer warriors. We were there. And um, one of the greatest disappointments in my life after we had moved from Pensacola and moved here, I was in Walmart. <laughs> And Cheryl had actually come here with a few others. We were going to start a ministry team together with some people from the Brownsville Revival students that didn't know what they were doing in life. We said, come to Dothan, let's do this. We didn't know what we were doing. It didn't really succeed. But Cheryl moved back to Tallahassee. And um, I was walking in Southside Walmart, and I heard the Lord say, pray for Cheryl. Cheryl. And I began to pray and come to find out she had been taken the side of the road. Um, a man in a van who had done a lot of serial killing had actually somehow gotten her attention. And y'all, this is a wise, Jesus-filled woman. It just seems so unbelievable that God would you know, that this would happen. He didn't make it happen, but that, that this would be her course. And the guy took her. He held her in bondage. We found out about it through friends who were calling Keith Collins that comes here. Cheryl was actually very close to his family as well. And they all were in church together in Tallahassee, or, yeah, Tallahassee Florida. And the phone call came in. We're, we're, we're creating search parties because we believe this happened in the vicinity of the National Forest. Jason and I dropped everything trying to find her. And that's the first time I'd ever been a part of a search and rescue. And I'm sharing this story with you because our search and rescue team did not find her body, but later on hunters did. They were out in the woods hunting and they came across a woman who had been beheaded and brutally dismembered. And my friend suffered that. I have no doubt though that my friend was giving this murderer Jesus Christ. If she was a sacrifice for his one more soul, then it was enough. She gave her life like a missionary on a mission field, like Stephen prayed preaching and standing for the gospel in the Bible. That's the kind of surrender God's looking for. I'm not saying you're going to go out of here and something brutally bad's going to happen to you, but man, if it did for the gospel, it still wouldn't be worthy of him. That I didn't feel like doing an altar call today. I felt like doing a search and rescue. I need a few of you who say, I'm not going to be churchy. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to step up in my faith. I just want to show you a search and rescue what it looks like when you're all doing this together. And it's not one person on fire. It's several on fire. And if that's any of you, I just, could you make a line with me right here? Pastor Jason, stand with me. We're going to lock arms with you and we're going to face this way. Come on. Just lock arms, get up here and lock arms, and only if you mean it, that you're a part of the search and rescue team. I just believe God has anointed some people, and today was about awakening our faith and activating it, and not sitting back and watching everybody else, but that we are to do our parts. We're to do our parts. We're to go and rescue those that are dying. Rescue those that are in need. Go to the nations and awaken the people because Jesus is coming. Jesus, come on, begin to intercede for them. Before we went and looked for her, we began to pray and we said, God, show us the path. Show us, Lord. Show us where you want us to be. God, we just want you. We want your results, God. We want your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're here, God. We showed up. We're present. Lord, use my life. By life or by death, we will serve the Lord. Come on, let's 
to be your cry this morning. By life or by death, we will serve the Lord. By life, it doesn't matter how painful it is at times, God. I step over my flesh to walk in the Spirit. I step over my mental state to walk by the Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. And when you're part of a search and rescue, you just begin to walk together and you cover ground that if one person was walking, they wouldn't see that ground. Okay? You feel me? You got it? Everybody stepped up. You covered ground that I could not cover. This is how it works. This is how it works. This is the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is how it works. Come on, come on, begin to worship him and pray him, pray with the Lord right now. Begin to continue his work. Where you're at, begin to intercede. Watchmen on the walls, I call you. Watchmen on that wall over there, begin to pray. Pray, watchmen on the walls. We pray for the north, the south, the east, and the west. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the jails and the prisoners. We pray for the high schools and the elementary schools. If you want to, just extend your hands in the direction that the Lord has you standing. Just begin to believe that the anointing is flowing from this place. And we are God's army. We are His people. We believe you, God. Right now, whatever the Lord's bringing to your heart, begin to pray. Begin to pray and intercede. The intercessors are arising. The intercessors are rising. The intercessors are rising. Come on, come on. I saw you, Lord, and I'll never be the same. Come on, keep praying for me, please. Please, please keep praying. Keep praying. This is leading your own prayers when, when I'm not around. Just pray. Earnestly seek him. Call out things that you know by the Spirit God wants to have happen. He wants to save our city. He wants to rebuke the devourer. He wants to raise our faith. Come on, begin to pray. Just don't stop, don't stop. That's how it works. That's how we do it. Come on, just keep praying. begin to pray. Don't let songs take over your words. watching God you know he's done something for you but you haven't fully committed you need to re repent come say I'm here I surrender come to these altars give your whole heart to God give your whole life to him here I am God I won't be disobedient with my faith anymore I won't be scared I will fear no evil for my God is with me he's with me and I give you my life I give you everything. Come on. 
come on. Come on. If you haven't been trusting God with everything, just come. Come on, worship team, lead us. <laughs> 